Thank you so much for that music. And I can't think of a better song to go with what we're speaking of this morning. So uh, thank you so much for the message and song. And aren't you thankful that in the midst of everything that goes on in our lives, the Bible says that we have an anchor that is going to hold firm. What a tremendous promise from the Word of God that we have about this anchor. If you have your Bibles, if you'll turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. We're in the midst of a series of how to triumph over the things that happen in our lives and when you look at the Apostle Paul and you see the things that he has gone through, I think we can identify with some of the trials that we go, to, go through. And this is really a, a personal testimony from Paul to help us to, to understand how to deal with life. Because life sometimes can be very, very difficult. And life can be discouraging. I want you to hear what Paul has to say in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning in verse number 8. And I'm going to ask if you will please to stand for the reading of God's Word. Paul writes these words. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Lord, encourage us in your word today. Father, speak to us. Lord, you know the need of every person in this congregation this morning. And Lord, you know exactly what we need. So Father, I pray through the power of the Holy Spirit of God that Lord, you would speak to us and give us today exactly what we need. Father, thank you for these things. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake, amen. The Apostle Paul was... No stranger, stranger to suffering. Throughout his life, he had endured all kinds of hardship. In this same book in chapter 11, Paul describes some of the things that he has gone through. So when you're having a bad day, maybe you want to look in this chapter and See what Paul went through and then kind of see if we're having as bad a day as Paul had sometimes. He said of the Jews five times received I forty stripes save one. 
Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, suffered shipwreck, night and the day, and I've been in the deep. Journeys often, perils of water, of robbers, my own countrymen, heathen, perils in the city, the wilderness, perils among false brethren, on and on and on. Paul was no stranger to suffering. This morning, I want us to look in this fourth chapter. But I want to speak to you today about how to finish well. Paul, in his description of what has taken place, has gone through many things in his life. He has got a lot of miles on that old body. And a lot of them have been tough. And so in this passage, Paul is teaching us how to finish well. Perhaps your starting in the Christian life was not real well. Maybe you floundered and fell because you had, didn't have a good foundation in Maybe in your earlier life you went through some things and perhaps you did things and perhaps even now you're paying the price for those things. And Satan still reminds you of all those things. And you wonder, how am I going to finish? Am I going to finish like I started or am I going to finish well? And I want you to to think about that this morning. I want to think about that because I want to finish well. I I want to finish and have the Lord say, well done, good and, and faithful servant. Well, how did, what encouraged Paul? What encouraged this This man to to keep on when life seemed to beat him down day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. What kept Paul going through all those things? I want to give to you very quickly four things that we see in this passage and in the life of Paul that encouraged him to be faithful to God that encouraged him to finish well. You can call these values, you can call them precepts, whatever you want to call them. These are some things that will help us. First of all, in verse number 8, Paul begins to talk about the things that happened in his life. So the first thing that he talks about is this. To finish well, you and I must triumph over tribulation. Look what he says here in verse number 8. He said, we are troubled on every side, but not distressed. It's the idea of being afflicted, of being punished. But Paul said, listen, although I am going through this, this trouble, this affliction, he said, I am not crushed. Things were happening, but he said, I haven't been crushed to the point I can't do anything else. He gives us four things here that he talks about. He says, not only am I troubled, but I'm not crushed. He said, I'm perplexed, but I don't despair. He says here that he is perplexed. It means to be at wit's end. Have you ever been there? What do I do? Where do I go? How do I do it? Paul said, I've been at my wit's end, but I didn't despair. Because God always had a way out. Isn't that encouraging to know when you're at your wit's end, God is always there? He says to us, I will never leave you or forsake you. What a wonderful God we have. But he goes on to say this. He says, I'm persecuted, but not forsaken. In other words, 
Paul was, on many occasions, by the Judaizers, he was hunted down. He was persecuted. It reminds me of, you know, sometimes when you do things, things come back to bite you. You know what Paul did in his early life? He persecuted the Christians. Well, they've come back now. And what's happening is the same thing that Paul was doing is now happening to him. He's being persecuted. He's being hunted down. That's why five times he said, I, was, I got the 39 stripes. Can you imagine that five times? He said, I was stoned. I was beaten. I don't think he was very much to look at by the time he went through all that. That's why he could say that my body bears the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of all that I've gone through. He said, listen, he said, I've been persecuted, but he said, I've not been forsaken. I've not been deserted. I've not been abandoned. God's there. Yes, there was persecution. But listen, God was there. He goes on to say, he said, I was cast down, but not knocked out. It's the idea of being wrestled to the ground. Knocked down. I was thinking, I've got a, a note in my Bible from years ago about a boxing match that happened I'm thinking at least 40 years ago. And it reminded me this aspect of being knocked down, but not knocked out. There was a fight many years ago between John Tate and Mike Weaver. And for 14 rounds and two minutes, basically John Tate beat Mike Weaver all over the place. And then, Mike Weaver hit him, and he knocked him out. Fell flat on, I mean, he knocked him cold. You know when you fall face down, you are out. Oh, Mike had been knocked down, but he wasn't knocked out. But he got up and knocked the other guy out. Paul said, hey, that's me. I've been knocked down, but you had knocked me out. I'm going to keep on going. He said, I've not been abandoned. I've been knocked down. I haven't been destroyed. In other words, these things have happened in my life, but I'm still going. I'm like the old Energizer Bunny. You can't, knock, you can't keep me from going. That's old Paul. So the, the thing he, he's trying to teach us is, this first thing is, Triumph over tribulation. Those things are, are going to happen in my life and in your life. But he says to us, you can, through the power of God, triumph over those things that are coming into your life. That's encouraging. The second thing he says is this. To value the spiritual over the physical. Now, there's nothing wrong with being in shape, and we should be. But he said, there, he said there, there is something that's more important than this physical life. And notice what he says. He's, he begins to, to give us a, a series of things in, in verses uh, like 10 through 16. Notice what he says. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That's what he had just been talking about. Being beaten, being stoned, perplexed, cast down. He said, always bearing about in the body this dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. But see, he didn't, he didn't focus on that. 
What he focused on was the spiritual. Because notice what he says in verse 10. He said, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. He said there was a purpose. He said more important than the, the fact that I was beaten and all these things is that the life of God was manifest or revealed, was made known in my life as I went through those sufferings. He said, that's how you finish well. That's how you finish well when your priority, your perspective, your value is on the spiritual over the physical. But he goes on to say this, For we which live are always delivered unto death, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh, so then death worketh in us, but life in you. What was Paul trying to say? As they observed him, they were observing the life of the Spirit of God in a man who was surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. And because he was surrendered, he didn't whine, he didn't fuss. What he did is he focused on God and God used that that beaten body to manifest the life of God through him. That's what Paul's saying. But he goes on. He said, not only that, there's death, then there's, he said, also there's the spirit of faith. Verse 13, we have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken, also we believe, and therefore we speak. He is saying here that it was this same spirit of faith that helped him to go through. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. What did he heard? That God is faithful. That God's always there. So what was he doing? In his body, he was manifesting this spiritual principle that God was there. Aren't you glad that the scripture says that there's, man, there's times when... Uh, we just can't go on. Um, in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah writes these words. And, and I think this might be real appropriate because I, I was noticing uh, some of you folks having a hard time this morning. Listen to what Isaiah says. Hast thou not known Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? He giveth power to the faint. Amen. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall fall, shall faint, be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Folks, that's spiritual. That's what Paul's trying to, to teach us here. He goes on to say this, but he said in verse 14, he says, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus Christ shall raise us also up by Christ. In other words, he said, listen, it is this resurrection power of the Holy Spirit of God that you are seeing demonstrated in my life. Paul said, listen, don't look at me, look at Jesus. Because it's the Lord Jesus Christ who is manifesting Himself through the power of the Holy Spirit, through this resurrection power in the life of Christ, and it's being manifested so that everybody can see that it's not Paul, it's not his strength, but it's the power of God. See, that will encourage us. That will help us to, to finish well when we understand that it's not our strength. It's not our ability. It's His power. It's His ability. It's His strength that helps us to go on. Thank God for that. But then he 
He says this, verse 15. He said, for all these things are for your sakes. What? I know what, Paul, you, you've gone through all these things in your life, these beatings, these suffering, shipwreck, being in prison for us. That's what he says. Look what he says here. For your sakes, that the abundant grace might through thanksgiving of many abound to the glory of God. You see what Paul's saying? Paul is saying, listen, it's all about the glory of God. Because now God gets the glory. God is the one who does this. Look at verse 16. He says this, for this cause. What does it mean for this cause? Everything he's just been talking about. The power of God to raise him up. The power of God to give him strength to walk through those trials and and tribulation. He said, because we've got this resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ in us, we are your example. He said, because of this, we don't faint. He said, listen, this outward man is perishing. You ever get up in the morning... And want to put it back down into bed. (laughs) You don't feel good. You don't want to do anything. Well, there's a reason. You're getting old. (laughs) You're going, duh. Well, isn't that what Paul says? He said, listen. He said, this outer man is perishing. Don't you think you'd be perishing too if you'd been whipped and stoned and everything else? Don't you think you, you, the body might be a little bit tired and wore out? But he said, listen, there's something better than that. He said, it's the spiritual. He said, the physical is wearing out. But the spiritual God is renewing day by day by day. The world is killing this body, but the Holy Spirit of God is encouraging this old man. He's encouraging me because he's renewing me day by day by day by day. That's why when you can go to a child of God and they might be near the end of life and they've got something in them that you cannot explain. They've got the joy of God in them. Why? Because the inner man is being renewed day by day by day. That's what he says. That's what's happening. You triumph over tribulation. Spiritual over the physical. There's a third thing very quickly. A future over the present. Look what he says here. Verse 17. He says, For our light affliction... Do you see what he's just called everything he's gone through? You ever got on the phone and say, man, I've just had the worst day of my life. You wouldn't believe how bad things are. <laughs> oh, God. You know what Paul said? Nothing. It is light affliction. How in the world could he say that? Because his priority was on the future and not on the present. See, that's what happens so many times. We get so earthly minded, we're no heavenly good. We get focused on this this world. But boy, there is such a, a contrast that Paul talks about here. Because notice what he says here in, in this verse 17. He says, Our light affliction. In other words, he's he's got a, a scale. He said, on one side. You've got all the the troubles, the tribulations, everything I've gone through, which is just for a moment. But here's what he said. 
all those things have a purpose. They are working. In other words, they are bringing about something else for the future. What Paul says next is really indescribable. Because that's basically what he is trying to say. It's, he first of all talks about glory. What is glory? Glory is brightness, it's radiance, it's splendor. It's that which we saw in the Old Testament where Moses, as he's leading the children of Israel out of Egypt, and the Bible says that there's the Shekinah glory of God, the pillar of cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night the Holy Spirit of God. We read about it a few weeks ago when we were talking about the law and Moses is there and there the Bible says that he is meeting with God and the Shekinah glory of God comes upon his face and he has to veil his face. You read about it in Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 6 where, where Solomon is getting ready to dedicate the temple And he's got all these sacrifices. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit of God, the Shekinah glory of God comes down in such a way they can't do anything. That's glory. But he he talks about the, the transfiguration where the Lord Jesus Christ is up on the mount, Peter, James, and John. And what happens? The Scripture says that Jesus is transfigured before them. What happens? That which is on the inside of the Lord Jesus Christ is manifested. What do they see? The radiance, the glory, the splendor of God. But then, this last chapter we looked at, you know what Paul said? Paul said, listen, child of God. He said, when you look in the face of Jesus, when you look in the Word, here's what happens. Your face is transformed from glory to glory. Well, if that don't make a bad wish, I don't know what will, folks. I mean, my goodness, look what he's saying. This glory of God, but look what Paul says here about this glory. He said, first of all, it's a glory, but then he says it is an, a weight of glory. If you go back in the, in the Old Testament, here's what you'd find where uh, they describe glory as, as that which is weighty or heavy. And so he, Paul, Paul says we've got this glory of God, this radiance. It's, 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 we, it's got this heaviness. And then he tries to describe it. And he, he uses two English words that are translation of this. Hyperbole to hyperbole, which means this. You can't explain it. It is so magnificent, so exceeding, so eternal that you can't even explain what this glory is. Now you think about that. He said on one side, you've got light affliction. But on the other side, you've got this eternal weight of glory. He said, that's how you finish well. Very quickly, let me give you number four. Look at verse number 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Paul had a way of looking at things that were eternal. He says to us, That's what we need to do. We need to look at the eternal value of things rather than those that are just here for a while. Probably the greatest example of that is Hebrews chapter 11. If you were to go over to Hebrews chapter 11, you would find that he starts off by saying that faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. And then he begins to to 
give us testimony after testimony, beginning with Abel, and he said, by faith, Abel offered up a more excellent sacrifice. And there was old Enoch, and by faith, Enoch was translated so that he did not die. It was Abraham. By faith, he was called to a country he'd never seen. Here's Abraham. What did he do? He sojourned in that land. Here's Abraham. What does he do? He offers up Isaac, his only begotten son. Then he moves on to, to Moses. Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And by faith, he forsook Egypt. All the gold, all the glamour, everything that was there. 1980. First time I saw Benny Biggs. No, I didn't see him. <laughs> but I think we might have been at the same World's Fair. And you know, they had an exhibit there from Egypt. I have never seen so much gold in all my life. And never will, I'm sure. Do you know what the Bible says? Moses forsook the gold and the glamour because he was looking for a city. What does that tell us? He was looking at the eternal and not the temporal. I encourage you today if you want to finish well look at those things put those principles into your life and you will finish well because you're serving a God who can give you the strength to walk through all of those things just like the apostle Paul you and I can finish well because of him. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you today for the privilege of being in your house. Lord, we thank you today that you are our God. And Lord, we pray that, Lord, you'll encourage your people. Father, speak to them. Lord, bless them. Father, walk with them this day. And Lord, help them to finish well. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. If you'll stand together this morning, very simply, the invitation is this.